Right, good evening ladies and gentlemen, lads and lasses, this is Ince Tips and Advice for Beginners. Um, I've had a few really nice comments on the videos that I've made up to now. I got um, a nice message from uh, John O'Connor, all the way from Ireland, Dublin and Ireland. Um, big up to you, or whatever they do nowadays, these young'uns. Um, you were saying that, uh, John this is, was saying that he'd like some advice on some um, good practical ways to improve his practice regime. Now, I know there's, again, as with virtually everything else that we've gone through, if you go on um, YouTube, where this will be uploaded to, you'll see videos from the likes of probably Phil Taylor and um, Anderson and a few of the other ones. Um, Bob Anderson, of course. Um, you'll see a lot of videos that, that tell you to go through strict regimes of how to practice. I find that it's really very simple. What you've got to do is you've got to attempt to get your darts nice and tightly grouped, as tightly grouped as you can, and it doesn't matter whether that's round the 60 bed, or whether it's round a double, or whether it's round another treble. Obviously, you've got to do split throwing. You can't group round everything, because obviously, if you, if you let's say you're on for the nine darter, and you're on the last one, and you're going for treble 20, treble 19, double 12, obviously they're a distance apart. There's no grouping involved in that. So you've also got to be able to um, practice what I call your one hitters. So in other words, going from one place on the dartboard to another. But the thing that you really do have to think after master first is your grouping. That is the, the mainstay of you know, your bread and butter of your actual darts throwing. Your grouping, if you're going for, let's say, I'm looking over here because this is where my board is, let's say we're going for double 15. Um, if you throw the first one and it's just on the wire, you need the capability then to be able to take your next arrow in off that barrel. So your grouping is absolutely vital. Very, very good um, way of practicing that, which is what I do, is I'll play 101 or I'll play 201. Fantastic game because it's just a, it's just a finishing game. Two or one means that you get a, you get a chance to, to knock in a one eighty or a one forty to leave yourself a nice finish. But one or one you can do it in in three arrows every time, and you can mix it up, mix it up, try for your bulls, try for your twenty fives, do your conventional ones, which is your sixty, your one, which is right next door, and your double top. What I tend to do is throw for the sixty. If I hit the sixty, I try and hit in the top section of the one. The top left hand corner so is it's not as near to the to the double top as possible because obviously you could stray into the 20 but you want to be nice and in the middle of that but slightly to the left of it so your actual arm is working its way up the board where you're actually going um, another good game that I play and um, me and my brother play this quite a lot is round the board but what we do is we discount the outside the outer circle of the board in other words, what we use is we use the trebles for doubles. So there are doubles when we play round the board. So what we do is play conventional round the board using the trebles for doubles. And then when it comes to the end of the game, all depends on how accurate you are. And as you progress, you can make it more and more difficult for yourself if, if that's what you want to do. Um, obviously, if you're playing 5 or one the game remains the same all the way through. It doesn't matter whether you play one leg or a thousand legs. The game's the same. All you're trying to do with this is trying to improve your accuracy. So what we do is we go round on the thing on the tre on the on the inside of the board, smaller sections, using the trebles for doubles in exactly the same way as I mean we play around the board. I don't know how, we, how you people play around the board, but what we do is we go. My ideal way of going around the board, the way I try and do it, is I normally go one, two, three, double four, nine double ten and then obviously your first double is is double four so you do two double fours and then a bullseye right so and on the bullseye you can either have one centre bull or two outer bulls the way that me and my brother play it now because we're, we really are quite proficient is we either say you've got to get two outer bulls and an inner bull in the thing in one arrow in the, sorry in one visit not one arrow in one visit or you've got to get two bullseyes. So that's how we play that. Um, other good games are, um, 
you're counting games so basically as you're coming down everybody tends to go for the splitters what they call the splitters so obviously your first splitter is your 20s so you can go 20s if you miss it 10s if you miss it 5s obviously 5s is your break point on that your most um, comprehensively splittable one everybody knows is your 16s because you go for 16s 8s 4s 2s and 1s so that will split all the way down to the bottom obviously you want to be finishing before you get to ones hopefully the best advice I can give you to improve your averages is not to use gimmicks not to believe in gimmicks but to believe in yourself it's you who's throwing these arrows the arrow exactly the same as a car exactly the same as a motorbike exactly the same as an axe or a hammer it's an inanimate object until you pick those arrows up they can't do anything whatsoever so it's not the arrows that are thinking that are playing darts for you a lot of people will go and they'll say and I've had this before and it's absolutely genuine and it just tickles me every time I think about it a chap contacted me and said to me um, I'm playing and I've got an average round of about 30 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and buy myself some Phil Taylor darts these um, phase 7s or whatever they are I think they're 70 quid or something and he was absolutely convinced that because he bought Phil Taylor's darts he was going to play better absolute rubbish if you can throw you can throw 6 inch nails as long as you've got flights on them and they're sharp enough to stick in the board as I say a dart is an inanimate object it's you that's actually throwing it at the board and regardless even when people say um, my shafts are too long they're too short I'm fine tuning them what are they actually fine tuning them for because if you throw your dart if you've got a good mechanical throw every time you throw your dart it's going to land in the same spot because no matter how many twiggles in the air or wiggling from side to side it's going to do it's going to land in the same spot if you throw it the same it's going to land the same and if that's the case then all it takes from you is to be able to adjust where you throw in the dart to and it'll go in the same place every time the only anomaly you've got with that is the amount of different things that you do when you throw your dart I've covered this in a thing in an earlier video but of course if when you're throwing you're going like this as you throw in at the board which a lot of people do I've seen them some people will throw a bit like my dad does and he holds his darts like this and he throws them like that now if you can throw them exactly the same every time then obviously you've got nothing to worry about they're all going to stick in the, sa in the same part of the same bed and then you're going to be able to get 180s and all that unfortunately it doesn't work like that you need a good mechanical way of throwing because the more anomalies you've got in your throw the more accurate you've got to be every time you release that dart and the more things have got to come together as one to make that dart go in the same place so obviously if you've got a nice mechanical throw where as all you're using is from your elbow so you've got two points of movement which is your elbow and your release and it's dead steady every time and it'll throw every time and I can I can pick up now darts of 18 grams and darts of 30 grams all in a bunch and I'll be able to throw them all relatively in the same spot the 30 gram darts are not going to go into the three or in or out the top of the board they might be a couple of millimetres off either side but it's all about you it's not about the darts so hopefully this will give you a little bit more of an insight into it give you some decent practice regimes which is play the best way to practice is play the game that's what I do a lot of professionals tell you to, to throw at this throw at that throw at the other just play the game get yourself a good app on your phone right that does all your averages um, you can play cricket with it which is another game that I don't particularly mind too much about but some people like to play it you can play cricket with it um, you know, like I just said it'll keep your averages and you can play against a droid <clears throat> I have one on my phone can't remember what it's called off the top of my head but it's uh, it's for, for an Android and it's on the thing on the App Store like all they are even the Apple iPhone you can get it for I believe and um, just play against that and a good regime is 
Play for an hour, have 15 minutes break. Play for an hour, have 15 minutes break. Whatever you do, don't stand at the dartboard for three and four hours at a time. All you'll do is you'll get tired, you'll get frustrated, and you'll find, just like with babies, this, uh, this is an absolute fact, this, when you're throwing, right, you can be practicing for four hours and you won't feel that you've got any better. But tomorrow, when you get up and you play again, you'll see an improvement in your darts. And that's because you log everything that you've learned when you're not actually doing it. You don't log things while you're actually physically doing things. It goes into your brain when you rest afterwards. So the thing to do is what I do. Practice an hour, an hour and a half. Obviously, if you're playing a game, it's going to be longer than that, but that's a different thing altogether. But if you're practicing, practice for an hour, 15 minutes off. Practice for another hour, 15 minutes off. Have a nice relax, have a brew, do whatever you're going to do, and then come back to the board again. Exactly the same, if you're getting frustrated, if, say, you've decided to do your own practice regime, and you're practicing for double two, and you can't hit it for toffee, walk away. Don't keep going and hammering and hammering at it, because all you'll do is just keep missing. Walk away, go and have a brew, have a relax, um, go and chat to someone, watch a bit of telly, whatever, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, come back, try again. If, you, if you're absolutely adamant that you're going to be doing 16, so you've turned around and said to yourself, I'm going to throw 20, 20 double 16s before I finish for today. If you're going to do that, start on it. You might, you might hit two or three in a row. You might hit five or six in a row. You might hit nine in a row. But at some point, you'll find that you have a dip in your performance and you won't be able to hit them. When that happens, you've had two or three visits to the board and you haven't hit a double 16, walk away. Just walk away, have a brew, come back. One of the best pieces of advice you could ever have. Right, hope this has helped some people. Thanks for the, um, for the nice letter, John. And uh, I'll make another video soon. All the best and totally okay.